just realized my other, oh, hold on. I know what I did. I need to add my overhead to the screen. There we go. I can't see anything but the little intro video when it's on. So um, good afternoon. How is everyone doing today? I hope y'all are well. Um, I'm Amy from Lulu Bean Designs and um, I am uh, the owner of obviously Lulu Bean Designs, but I also um, am going live every day this week on my page to show you guys the projects that we are doing in my membership group this month. Um, we are opening the doors to my membership group. It's called SVG Clubhouse. And um, we are only open a few times a year. And it's opening up again for new members next Tuesday, which is June 1st. So um, showing you guys all week this week the projects that we're making for the month of June. So um, if you are joining me uh, and coming in, just say hey and tell me where you're watching from. Hey, Jennifer, how are you doing today? Um, so I'm very excited to share these projects with you guys. I did um, two other projects so far this week. Um, SVG Clubhouse is a really fun community of crafters and laser owners who um, like getting a good discount and a lot of fun files every month. Um, so the way it works is that uh, when you join, it's $15 a month. Hello, Teresa, how are you? And uh, for that price, you get four new files every month that are completely exclusive to the group. So that means they're not ever for sale anywhere else. I don't put them in my Etsy shop. I don't sell them on my website. They are completely um, group files only. I always say what happens in SVG Clubhouse stays in SVG Clubhouse. So um, that's the way they work. So you can't, you know, you're not going to find a whole bunch of competitors out there necessarily selling the same products. Um, so the four files that you get every month in the club are uh, you get a tiered tray file, which is actually what we're going to paint today. And the uh, tiered tray files that I make in the group are always one sheet wonders. OK, if you don't know what a one sheet wonder is, it is a file that cuts all on one 12 by 20 sheet of wood. So if you're a Glowforge person, then you know that's your size that can fit in your Glowforge bed. And that way you can purchase your sheets of wood and know that your tiered tray every month is going to fit perfectly on that piece of wood. And that way, if you have like a monthly membership where you do like DIY kits or paint parties or things like that, or you just like selling kits and you need to know how much um, you need to get in the way of supplies. It's super helpful because you know that each one cuts on a sheet of wood. Oh, Jenny, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. Um, so today we're going to paint the tiered tray file. And um, our theme this month is called Pocket Full of Sunshine. So this is our little Pocket Full of Sunshine um, tiered tray. And I've got everything like separated and taped off here so I know what's what. So I'm going to show you all that in a moment. Let me show you the other projects we've made so far. We have, oh, so let me continue as I show you these projects telling you what other files you get. So the first file that you get is a tiered tray file. The second file you get is a door hanger. So the door hanger we've already done. And this is it. So these are the files for June, you guys. And um, I normally don't release my files each month until the first day of the month. But because we're opening the doors, I gave the files to all my members early. So everyone got them this week instead of next week. And so they're able to already start playing and having fun. Um, this is the pocket full of sunshine uh, door hanger that we made yesterday during our live. So I've got that. And then... The third project that you get to make is a miscellaneous project. So this month it is a shelf sitter. And this is our little pocket full of sunshine shelf. That's a hard thing to say. Pocket full of sunshine shelf sitter. Try saying that three times fast. Um, so anyway, this is our little truck shelf sitter. And if you wanted to, you could even do different attachments and maybe maybe that's a hint for later this month, maybe I will come up with some other surprise things to go in the back of our truck. Okay, so that's another perk of being in the club is that sometimes I, I pop in and give y'all some surprise files every month. Okay, so that's an idea, a little hint, hint, wink, wink. Um, so there's our shelf sitter. And then the other project, which we will be making tomorrow during our live is a shaker set. And if you're not familiar with the shaker set, you're in for a treat because that is um, one of my most popular items that I sell. 
um, are my shaker files. And I wish I had one on hand to show you. Like I said, we'll be making it tomorrow. So tune in then at one o'clock um, and you'll get to see a shaker, a shaker set um, put together. This is a hard month for talk for uh, saying the titles of our projects. Sunshine Shaker Set. <laughs> so that will be tomorrow. Okay, so that's what we've made so far. Um, now, in addition to the four files that you get every month that nobody else gets because they're exclusive to the group, you get 50% off all my files in my Etsy shop all the time. So a lot of people join just for that perk. That is the biggest perk because I sell a lot of files in my shop. And if you can get 50% off all your files, think of all of the stuff that you could make um, and get a fabulous discount at the same time. Um, we also do a virtual paint party every month. Um, this month, we're actually not doing the virtual paint party because I'm live every day this week doing all of the projects. But normally, I pick one project and I go live one day in that month and I, we just have like a virtual paint party where we craft together, we paint together, we can chit chat. It's just, you know, fun, uh, you know, little community of crafters getting together. Um, and the uh, members in the group get, of course, access to their private Facebook group where we uh, you can share everything in there. That's where, you know, a lot of people post pictures of the things they make. Um, I have a membership portal that when you join, you um, have access to and you can log in there and that's where all your files are stored. Um, so you have the access to the membership portal. And then when you're in the portal, you will see that you have the opportunity to go back and look at the past files that we've made in the months when you were not a member and you can purchase those files as well. I sell, <clears throat> excuse me, I sell them as bundles in the group. So they're not available for sale anywhere else, but you can join and have the opportunity to purchase past month's files in there. And they're usually $20 for the entire month's file. So $20 for four files. Or sometimes I'll do a bonus package and you will get um, more than four. And those are usually like $25 for a bonus package. Um, like I said, we open next Tuesday. Okay, so it's Memorial Day weekend. So we're not going to do Monday. We're going to do Tuesday, June 1st. And if you join on June 1st, you get all of the bonus files that I'm offering next week. Okay, so that's not what I'm showing you here. These are our June files. Whenever we open the doors, we get uh, we do bonuses. So next week, I will be offering five bonus files. So you get four files for June, plus you get five. So nine files total um, when you join next week. But you have to join on June 1st, on day one, to get all five files. Because every day that passes, one of those files goes away. Okay, so June 1st is your day. If you want to get on the waiting list to join so that you don't miss it, then look in the video description of this video and I have all the information there and the link to get on the waiting list. Okay, so make sure you're on that list to get emailed so you don't miss getting uh, in on June 1st. So you get all those files because you don't want to get in like the second day and be like, well, shoot, I wanted that one file that she was doing yesterday. Now, I do sell the bonus files as a package uh, in the group later on. Um, that you can purchase, but you get them for free if you join next week. They're just part of your membership, okay? So definitely perks for joining next Tuesday. All right, I'm going to move on. We're going to go ahead and start painting our little um, tear tray set here. So we have got um, this first piece that we're going to do is a tag. So if you like to string your little wooden beads and make a cute tag for the end of them, this is your little tag item that... Um, you can use for that, or you can do different things with it. You can put it on ribbon. This could make, you could do a keychain with this if you wanted to. You can use um, tags with the little holes at the top for lots of different purposes. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Jennifer. How are y'all doing? If y'all are popping in, please comment and say hello and let me know what's going on. Um, I'm trying to think how I want to paint these. I want them to match the other, um, I'm going to kind of scoot this off of here. There we go. Oh, look at that. It stayed together. All right. I'm going to paint the little tag white. We're going to use some white chalk paint on him. Get that painted. So if y'all have any questions about the club, then feel free to ask in the, um, the comments right now. Or you can message me. I 
I'm just doing a little bit of white chalk paint here to paint my tag. There's something stuck to it. Oh, it's masking tape. A little piece of the masking tape is on there. There we go. Y'all probably can't even see that. If you did not get your, your uh, text notification today that I was going live, then you can text me at the number at the bottom of the screen. And that puts you on my text notification list. And that way uh, you'll just get a little uh, text notification when I get ready to go live next time. So you can always catch me live and you won't miss another video. So feel free to just text hey to that number if you want to get on that list if you aren't already on it. Right. Just a coat of white paint on there. Go ahead and take those out of their little shell. And then I'm going to grab a black paint pen. This is a black Posca paint pen. <clears throat> and I'm just going to paint the outline of my flower. I love my Posca pens. If you don't have those, I um, highly recommend that you get them, especially if you like to make smaller items like tiered trays and keychains and bag tags and things like that because they are a huge time saver and they keep things nice and neat. You don't get paint everywhere and they last a long time. Um, you can get them on Amazon. I think Joanne Fabric sells them too, but I know you can get them on Amazon. Um, if you go to my website, lulubingdesigns.com, I do have a supply list over there, and I have a link to where you can get them on Amazon if you are looking for them. They sell, uh, you can do just the black ones, just the white ones, then you can do a combination of black and white, and then they also have sets of colors. So I had to have every color, of course, so I ordered the big set. But I also ended up, later on, I ended up ordering a um, pastel set, and I really like that. That's got some pretty colors in it. I do, too. I love paint pens. Um, oh, Kelly says, I can't wait for my thunder laser to arrive. I'll never leave my craft room again. Oh, you're so sweet. You said you plan to make every file I have. You're so sweet. So welcome to the Thunder community. Have you joined the Global Thunder Laser Facebook group yet? Um, that is a great Facebook group to belong to if you're a Thunder you. I have a Thunder and I also have a Glowforge. And I love them both for different reasons. Um, they are both super awesome. And sometimes I have them both running at the same time. <laughs> Jennifer says she loves Posca pens too. They are fantastic. So I'm going to paint my little... Um, Petals white. And just like we talked about yesterday, if you want to cut your white pieces out of whiteboard and not have to paint them, then you're just a smarty britches because that's a good idea. Because <laughs> I'm a lazy painter and I don't like to paint white. White is so boring to paint, especially a bunch of little white pieces. Or you could, I guess you could paint a board white and then just cut cut it out of there. You could do that too. I don't like to paint before I cut. I don't know why. I just don't. I've done that before. Probably because I don't like to mask because I got spoiled with my thunder laser. You don't have to mask things. Whereas with the Glowforge, you do have to do a lot more masking. So if I paint it before, then I have to mask it. I'm just a lazy crafter. I don't like to have to do all that. That's too many steps for me. Artistro pens are good also. Okay. How do you spell the name of the pens, Pamela? They are Posca, P-O-S-C-A. I don't have any of the artist, Artistro, is that right? I have these. These are Eroic pens. They're all right. They're cheaper than Posca and they come, well, this set I got before I got my Posca pens that came in a bunch of different colors. I still think the Eroic probably have more colors in the big set, but they're, so they're glossy, 
And some of y'all might like glossy. I prefer to paint with matte paint. And then if I want glossy, then I spray glossy, like a glossy coat at the end. But I feel like when I paint with glossy paint, then I don't get a nice even finish. I feel like it's just spotty to me. I don't know. Maybe if you're going to paint the glossy top coat after anyway, it doesn't matter. But I think glossy paint just maybe shows more imperfections. I don't know. It's just not my favorite. Okay, so then I'm going to grab a yellow Posca pen. Let me see if I have another. Those are the same color, I believe. One is just a fine point and one is a does it tell me the color? Some of them say the color and some of them don't. I think that one is just yellow. I think they're both the same shade of yellow though, pretty sure. Or you could do paint. My favorite acrylic paint is of course my Deco Art Americana. That's my go-to acrylic paint. But as you can see, these Posca pens have really good coverage. They're just awesome. All right. Normally I try to paint a little bit of each thing and then put them together, but I'm afraid I'm going to get all these flowers um, mixed up. So I'm going to go ahead, since I think this is pretty much dry, I'm going to go ahead and put this tag together. I'm just going to dab a little bit of glue on the back. Don't mind my ugly backs to my pieces because I need to clean my honeycomb tray something fierce. It is filthy. Y'all know that is not a fun job. I cannot get mine but so clean. I'm at the point with my thunder where I might just buy a new honeycomb bed because it's really, it's in bad shape. And I know probably y'all are thinking, well, why can't you just clean it? I have cleaned that thing. I have cleaned it and cleaned it. I have used oven cleaner. I have used a pressure washer. I have used Totally Awesome from the Dollar Tree. What else have I used? I've used everything everyone's recommended. And I'm going to tell you what, that thing is just not coming clean anymore. It's just really had some use. I've used it a lot. Um, Distro... 42 Artistro pens on Amazon for $42. That's a good price. I can't remember what I paid for Posca, but I'm pretty sure uh, that's a better price. This glue, because I know somebody's going to probably want to know, is um, Stick Fast Thick. This is my go-to glue, Stick Fast Thick. Sorry, can y'all see? Um, it is like super glue, so be super careful with it. Don't glue yourself to yourself. <laughs> um, don't give it to your children to play with. But if you're in a hurry and you're impatient like me or you're just doing a live video and you need something to dry fast, then I highly recommend. You can get that on Amazon as well. And that's on my, um, my supply list on my website too. I also think these flowers would be really pretty with the shoot I'm not gonna be able to remember the name of it what is that stuff where is it that you put on that gives that glossy texture like puffy kind of finish glass liquid glass that's what it is Th this file would be pretty I think with liquid glass I think the daisy would look really good now that's if you have luck getting daisy to not or I'm sorry your white paint to not turn yellow when you use liquid glass. Um, I don't know because I haven't used it enough. Um, my new glue is out for delivery. No more glue fingers. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my gosh. Oh Lord. You got the teen driving. Tracy, I feel for you. I'll pray for you because that is the scariest thing that a mother ever goes through just about at least um, is when your kids start driving. That is terrifying. All right. I'm going to here. I don't know why I'm doing this this way. I'm doing things the hard way. You do things a little different when you're trying to do it on a video than you do. Sometimes I think people are like, why is she doing it that way? Because I'm on a video <laughs> because I'm not doing it the way I would do it if I was just sitting at my craft desk. I'm trying to like talk and do it at the same time. And I don't have everything right next to me necessarily. And I'm trying to be conscious of how much of your time I'm taking 
and that sort of thing. So yeah, sometimes my techniques are maybe a little different on video than they would be if I was doing it just for like a customer or a present for somebody or what have you. All right, this is Ocean Blue by Deco Art Americana. Um, I'm using it because I'm sticking with my color scheme that I've been using all week for this uh, theme. And this is the blue that I've been using and I've been doing a little distress on it. So I'll be doing that here in a little bit. Um, there are lots of blues you could do for denim. There's probably a better blue than this one for denim, but I was going for like a bright, fun, summery, patriotic sort of blue. So that is what, um, this is the color that I went with. Now, yesterday I was telling y'all these um, tick marks for the denim for the pocket are etched on. They're part of the file. I engraved them. You don't have to engrave them. Um, you can uh, score them instead if it's quicker, if that's what you want to do, and that's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just paint this, and then I'm going to go back in with a white pen and fill in those holes. So you could leave them and just kind of try not to get paint down in them and just leave them engraved and not, you know, fill them in. I think I'm going to fill them in. I don't know. I kind of like this look, actually. I'm just making sure I don't have too much paint on my brush. Kind of looks cute like that, actually. Um, you missed the name. Oh, what was the blue? Ashley, the blue is Deco Art Americana Ocean Blue. Sorry, I'm holding it the wrong way. Ocean Blue. So I'll see. I don't know if I'll fill these in or not. I kind of like the effect it's giving. I kind of like the little bit of haze that I've got because... Um, of the engraving, it's leaving like a little bit of, of like a, a yellowed haze around the tick marks. I don't know if y'all can see that on camera, but I'm kind of liking it actually. I feel like it's very denim-esque. So there's that piece. What do y'all think? Should I leave it like that? Or should I go over the dark parts with white? What do y'all think? I did them with white for the pocket on my door hanger yesterday, but I kind of like it like that. Oh, my little pieces are coming out. I'm going to take them out. It doesn't really matter. This is where if you had cut this out of white, then it wouldn't be so tedious. But that's all right. That is all right. Um, Jennifer, is that link to the RT? Am I saying it wrong? RT's, I can't even, now I can't see the comment. Whatever the other paint pen was that you were talking about. Is that the link to that? Artistro, is that right? This is a little bit of a finer point black Posca pen just because this flower is a little smaller. You could do this outline um, in gray if you wanted to, that would be pretty. I mean, you could do it in whatever color you wanted. You don't have to make these daisies. I'm trying to make them look like daisies. Of course, daisies do not have a black outline, but I want them to pop against their background, so I just felt like black would make them pop. Or you could just paint the whole thing white if you wanted to, to look like a daisy. My hydrangeas have finally started to bloom today. I noticed that when I was out in my yard this morning. They're so pretty. Hydrangeas are probably my favorite flower. I love, I have some peonies too, but my peonies... There, my neighbor's tree is um, getting so big next to the fence that my peonies are not getting enough sun anymore. And so they're not blooming like they used to. So I probably need to move them 
but I don't know. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. I'm afraid to dig them up and move them. Y'all, I always forget to turn on my um, time lapse camera. So I make a time lapse video for y'all. There we go. All right. And fine tip white, just because these are smaller pieces. They're so little, though, they're so hard to paint. Oh, you like the black outline? Thank you. Yeah, I kind of wasn't sure about it either, but I painted the the first project this week with the black outline because I was kind of like, mm, what am I going to do to make it like pop against that gray? Because see, the window was gray. And I was like, uh-oh, I'm going to need to make it. Sometimes I don't think my color schemes through very well. And so I was like, well, I guess I'm doing black. And I like it. have my nephew over here doing some wood cutouts with my on my thunder laser today which is lock if you are watching this video thank you thank you thank you he has come over and to do a little work for me and today's the first day and he already knows how to use the laser and he's out there just cutting away This is when fingernails come in handy. These little tiny pieces to hold them down while I paint them. <laughs> um. Oh, you have, Pamela, you have a Glowforge and you have a Thunder Laser coming. You are going to be so in love with your Thunder Laser. Um, I don't really have any advice. Um, do you have your distilled water for your chiller? Because you have to have, you have to fill your chiller with distilled water. I think it takes two gallons, maybe. Yeah, I think it's two gallons. I just changed mine out. My husband changed it for me. Um, okay. I think you're probably, I think you're supposed to change it like every three to four months. But then I see other people saying that they don't change theirs, but like every year. And I didn't mean to let mine go a year. It just sort of time got away from me, but it's fine. And he, he changed it the other day and he said it was totally fine. Um, where are you putting your thunder laser? You are putting it somewhere, not in like a living space, right? Are you putting it in like a garage space or a workshop or something? I don't recommend them in the house, at least not for wood, because it's not like a Glowforge. It's a bigger, more industrial machine. It's louder. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to sneeze. It's louder and it um Okay. It um the wood smell. You don't want that in your house. Oh, where's my glue? Here we go. Um I mean, I cut with my pass-through door pretty much open all the time. Well, not even pretty. I mean, it's open all the time. I never even, like, put the little thing back on anymore because my pieces of wood that I use are pretty big, and it's just, it would be a lot more work and a lot more waste if I cut them down. I have the 30, uh, 36, 35, 35. So it's a 36-inch bed. and by 24 inches deep. 
but the 24 inches is, um, why am I doing this and not just putting this in here? That's what I should be doing like I did last time. So the 24 inches is really uh, just, you know, obviously an infinite number because it's got the pass-through doors on the front and back. Isn't that cute? I think I want a pair of jeans with a little daisy on the back of them. I think I would like that. But since I wear leggings every single day of my life, I don't know. Do I need that? <laughs> All right. There we go. There's our little pocket. I love it. So cute. Okay, we have to do our truck because I love the truck is my absolute favorite. So um, do you guys want to see the bonus projects for if you join next week? Do you want me to pop those up on the screen? Comment and let me know. And if so, I will pop up. I've got the blank pictures. I'll be painting them every day next week starting on Tuesday. So keep tuning in next week at one o'clock and I'll be painting um, all the projects. So I'm looking forward to that. That's gonna be fun. But yeah, okay, I'm seeing some yeses. Okay, I will pop the bonus projects up so you can see the things you get if you join next week. Okay, so remember, join on June 1st, next Tuesday, if you want to get all these bonus files because if you don't join the first day, then every day a bonus file goes away. Um, the tiered tray is the first one to go away. So if you want this tiered tray that I'm about to show you, not this one, this is the June one. You will still get this one if you join. But if you want the tiered tray for the bonus files, then join next Tuesday because that's the first one to go. Um, okay, hold on one second. Let me pop it up here. Okay, so if you look in the lower left hand of your screen, it is an apple picking tiered tray set. And again, all my tiered tray sets in the group are one sheet wonder. So they all cut out of a single 12 by 20 sheet of wood that fits in a Glowforge bed. So someone asked me yesterday, um, do they go over 19 inches? So I size them when I make the, the tiered trays, I size them at um, 19 by 10. Sometimes they go just an itty bitty bit over that, but they should fit in there. Um, I don't take them all the way to 12 by 20 because I want y'all to have a little wiggle room. So yes, you should be fine. Um, so yeah, the tiered tray's got a little jam jar, a little um, uh, apple cider. You know, of course you can make that. That's like an apple butter jar because you think of apples and apple butter. So I'm, I'm calling it an apple butter jar. A little apple cider donut framed set. Um, the truck has apples in the back and it says apple picking on it. And then the little um, apple pie and the little uh, cutting board and then the little banner with the cider mugs and the Ray Dunn font on there. Um, so that is your tiered tray that you get. That's the first one to go. Now, I cannot remember the order of the rest of them. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the second one that's going to go next week is going to be the one in the top left corner, which is the Sunshine um, Tablescape. So that one is a, uh, a set for your table. Okay, so it's a little napkin ring, sunflower napkin ring, a sunflower place card with a mini easel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint that little place card with black chalk paint so that you can take a white chalk marker and you can write a name on it. Okay, or you can you could cut the, uh, the little place card out of chalkboard if you wanted to. If you guys, and if any of y'all do the whiteboard with the chalk, you know, if you know what I'm talking about with the black chalkboard on the back, you could cut it out of that too. But either way, you can paint it with black chalk paint and then use a white chalk marker to put a name on it, okay? And then the box is a centerpiece. So that's gonna be, it's a 3D box that stands up that's for the center of your table. And it says, hey, sun, hey sunshine. Um, and then I'm gonna be, someone else asked me yesterday, am I gonna be making more tablescape files? Yes, I will. So I'm gonna be making some more for fall and Christmas and things like that. But that's the summer one, this, the Hey Sunshine set. Okay, then in the right top, we have the Stars and Stripes pinwheel door hanger um, with the little patriotic font, um, which is super cute. And I can't wait to paint that one. That's just gonna be so, so cute. I love red, white, and blue on my front door. Um, and then let's see, then we have the another door hanger that says sunrise, sunburn, sunburn. Y'all, I'm telling you, it's too many S's. 
sunset repeat, uh, just like the song. And then you've got the half sunflower on one side and the, the lettering on the other side of that door hanger. And then you've got a pink lemonade sign on the right hand side with a little lemonade pitcher and ice cubes and a little pennant banner. And it says fresh squeeze pink lemonade on there. Um, and all of these projects are sized to fit in the Glowforge bed. OK, so you don't have to move things around, resize them. You don't have to do all that. Now, you may have to for the, you know, the tablescape one, you're going to need multiple sheets of wood to cut all those pieces out for that centerpiece. But I have it all sized to fit. Um, and the door hangers, all of my door hangers in the group are in two sizes. They are all in a 10 inch size and an 18 inch size. And that way, if you do not want to have to learn how to use your pass through door, if you do not want to buy a bigger round to make a bigger door hanger, um, you can cut out just a little 10 inch version and maybe use it like on the easel on your you know table or whatever as a little decoration. And you can cut it out with your machine without having to, to deal with all that if you don't know how. Um, let's see. I'm totally trying to not put a down not put a down on a thunder 35 do you mean a down payment on a thunder tracy comment and let me know um the background on here is just a um i forget what you call it the removable wallpaper the peel and stick wallpaper that i got from amazon and it's just a wood shiplap um kind of look and as you can see everybody says is it wipeable well if i wiped it it would be <laughs> it's supposed to be wipeable but i'm gonna tell you i've let paint just start getting on here and it is what it is it's my my art table um yeah i'm not gonna like stress over trying to get the paint off of it um if you cleaned it right away then yeah, it does come off um, pretty easily. And I've taken a magic eraser to it and had some luck with getting um, some of the really stuck on paint off of it. But I just kind of don't worry about it anymore. As you can see, I'm just slopping paint. I got it everywhere. All right, so. This why did I do that? I mean, I don't I don't know why I'm trying so hard to keep these from coming apart because I'm gonna take them apart anyway. I don't know why I'm doing that. I just need to not worry about it. Now I don't need to paint this entire thing because it's a layered piece. So I am just gonna do this. And those, um, the lines on there are part of the file. So they're scored on there just to help you uh, be able to paint your piece a little bit better, a little bit easier. All right. And then while those are drying, I'm going to do my flower. Um, oh, a down payment. You have a spot for it and shouldn't spend that much. Oh, you have no spot for it. Oh, yeah. They, um, they're a lot bigger than you think. When mine came, it came in a giant crate and I was like, oh my goodness. I mean, yeah. Huge machine. It's 600 pounds is how much the Thunder Laser weighs. And that's not for the biggest one. They have bigger than that. Mine is like a medium sized. It is an industrial machine for sure.
paint the center of our flower that bright, cheerful yellow. Um, Pamela, a thunder laser, the vent. Um, I can't remember if it's a six inch. I think it's a six inch vent that you need. And I have it in my garage. So I had an electrician come out and install an outlet for it. And then when they did that, I also had them um, put a vent to the outside of the house that I could hook it up to. So a dryer vent, but it's not, I think it's bigger than a dryer vent if I remember correctly. If you go on the Facebook group, the Global Thunder Facebook group, they will, um, somebody can tell you what size it is. I think they've even linked um, where to purchase the stuff to install it on there. They are very helpful. I even had a guy who, bless his heart, lived all the way in Texas and took time out of his day in that group to call me and walk me through something that I was doing wrong and troubleshoot with me. Um, and it was something so silly, but he didn't know how to help me with, you know, on, in the comments because he couldn't see what I was doing. And when I finally explained, it was just a matter, it was something in light burn. It was a matter of like my machine wasn't, or my light burn wasn't set for basically for like home base to go back to like the upper left corner. It was set for something else. I can't remember. But anyway, he was so sweet and helped me through that whole thing. And once I figured it out, I was like, oh my gosh, that's it. So easy. I mean, I'm not tech savvy. And if I can figure it out and my husband, I mean, he's helped me some, um, but it's not like he is a, a techie guy either. He's not an engineer. He's not, you know, a Mr. Fix it kind of personality necessarily with a lot of things. And so, um, he has, you know, helped me figure out a couple things with it, but I, I basically figured it out. And if I can figure it out, I'm telling y'all anybody can figure it out. All right. And then my little sunshine word. And y'all, I do um, make sure on my tiny files, like my tiered trays and things, that the dots on the eyes are attached. Um, for all my new files, all the files in the group, because nobody likes to have to fish out the dot on the I. That is no fun. Now, if y'all want this to be a stand-up piece, um, by the way, I meant to tell my members this. I need to post this in the group too, since I gave them this file early. If anybody's in my membership group and you already have this file, I meant to give y'all a stand for this truck so you can stand it up, um, which is why it's layered the way it is. Um, but it won't fit. In order to make it a one sheet wonder and fit on that 12 by 20 sheet of wood, I couldn't make it work. So I can give that to y'all separately if you would like me to do that. But I typically just lean things on my tiered trays. I don't stand up a lot of things because I, I do a lot of little doodads and plants and little, you know, things that I can just kind of lean. And I use easels that I purchase or I either cut them or I purchase them at, at Hobby Lobby. Um, so that's what I typically do. Um, the yellow, Diane, is just yellow. It's just a Posca pen in yellow. That's It's not like any kind of different shade. Um, but yesterday on the other projects, I did use golden yellow from DecoArt and that coordinates well with the yellow um, Posca pen, if that helps you. All right, I am going to paint, because I want a light yellow, I mean a light yellow, a light gray, I think. Yeah, this one's lighter for the window. So I'm gonna use some um, DecoArt paint. This is gray sky.
And because I have the line etched on there, I can follow the lines. And it helps me get things straight. And I like an angled brush. I typically don't use straight brushes. For some of the big pieces I do, like the, I mean the bigger brushes I do. But you can kind of whip your angled brush around a corner. Do you see that? I don't know if y'all can see that very well on camera. But an angle brush enables you to kind of go around a corner better. I used slate gray. Did I use slate gray on the window? I thought slate gray was darker. Maybe I did. I used slate gray on something the other day. Maybe I did use that on the window. I thought I used this one. They're very similar. You could just buy one and add a little white to make it lighter if you wanted to. Buy the darker. I think the darker is the slate gray. They're very similar. All right, and then we're gonna do the tires on here. And then I'm trying to copy what I did on the other one. I did I have a gray Posca pen, but it might be too dark. Let me see. No, it's okay. And that color is just gray. Just says gray for my pasta and a little red. And then make sure I'm not missing any of y'all's comments. Your thunder came six weeks early, Kimberly. Oh my gosh. Oh no, you haven't taken it out of the crate. Well, I know what you'll be doing this weekend, right? We were actually on a trip when ours came. So ours couldn't come out of the crate right away either. And then, you know, I needed to wait until my husband could help me because it's so big. Okay, I'm going to add my little attachments here. And that's why I did the etched line on here so you could line this up just right. And you could also use your 3M sticky tape that you can cut. If any of y'all use that, that would be good for all these little pieces. All right, put that there. And 
me go ahead and glue this on. I love the little trucks. I love throwing a little truck into a tiered tray piece. That's why I did the apple picking one with the truck too, because I just thought it was so cute. I don't know if I'm, because I kind of want to paint the truck red in the apple picking set, but then I can't do red apples, I guess. Well, I could because the apples would be against the window. I guess I could do that, but I kind of want to do a red truck. So maybe I should do green apples. What do y'all think? Last one doesn't wanna wants to stay stuck to my finger. There we go. Okay, so there is our little truck piece. How cute is that? Whoops, love it. Set that up there. All right, so we've got two more things to make. We've got our banner and we've got this little piece here, this little sign. You think some red and some green, green and yellow apples, that would be cute. Or I could do, yeah, I could do a distressed um, green, that would be cute. All right, this is gonna get on my nerves if I don't do this for my sunshine. for my sunshine letters. That would have been a good trick. I should have used that trick for my all my petals, which I think I am going to do it for this one. The tape trick. Do y'all do the tape trick? This is how I usually do it. I don't know why I haven't been doing it this way on videos. There we go. Now, so I want, let me think about this, because I want this to be black. I'm gonna paint this black with um, chalk paint. I love a little sign that looks like a chalkboard sign on a tiered tray. I just think they're super cute. Let me put this up here so y'all can see it. I always tend to pull things close to me when I'm painting them, but then I forget. Y'all can't see that. 
I'm trying not to get a ton of black paint on my table. Jennifer says she always tapes. Yeah, if I'm doing little pieces, I always tape. Okay. There we go. All right, it is time for a baby wipe for my hands because this is driving me crazy. Paint everywhere. I went to get my nails done last week and the guy was like, my guy Jake that does my nails, I love him. He's like, looking at my nails like, what do you do? What on earth? <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, I didn't get all the paint off. Um, okay, so because we have a black background, let's do the outline of our flower in gray for this one. That is a juicy Posca pen. Do y'all see that? Very inky. I like that shade of gray though. That's a pretty shade of gray. Okay. So then let's do, I guess we'll do both of those and white, that's a lot of white. I wonder if I should do the hay in yellow. What do y'all think? If I do the white and sunshine, or the, the sunshine and white, the flower of course in yellow and white, and then the petals, you know, what I've been doing, the, the flower, the yellow and white, so I do that white. Should I do this yellow or should I just do it white? I don't know. What do y'all think? Why do I have black ink on my white pasta pen? Oh, I know because I did those truck tires. Oh no. There we go. I was going to say I have ruined my white pen. Do y'all say who, y'all say, um, I can't talk today, y'all. Okay, so I say ruined. I have a friend from Michigan, and we always pick on each other for our the way we say words differently. And um, her husband is so funny. He says ruined. So whenever he says, you, ru you know, you ruined it, he says, you ruined it. Ruined. <laughs> And I always laugh at him when he says it. So my husband and I, whenever we use the word ruined, we always say, you ruined it. And then we joke about the way we say um, crown, crank crayon, because <laughs> the crowns that you color with are crowns. They're, I've always called them crowns, okay? I know that's how you say the crown, like the queen wears a crown. I know that. But to me, you call those Crayola crowns. I don't call them crayons. And my Northern friends call them crayons, which is how you probably should say it because that's how it's spelled. I don't know, but I've just always called them crowns. How do y'all say it? <laughs> um, okay, so yellow on sunshine and white on hay. Oh, yellow on sunshine. I'm live. Bo Taylor, I'm doing a live video. Bo, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, y'all. I am on a live video. Okay. I can't run the blender. No, you cannot run the blender. All right, bye. <laughs> Lord. You can go hang out with Locke in the garage, though, if you want to. Okay. 
There they go. <laughs> Coming in here. What time is it for their lunch break at 2 o'clock being all loud? My craft room is right off the kitchen, so I do not have a door to shut. I was like, oh, Lord. Lord only knows what kind of things y'all are going to hear here in a minute. Okay, I painted, I'm sorry, I was going to paint the sunshine in yellow when I got distracted. So I painted the hay in yellow, and I'm going to paint the white, the sunshine white. So I don't know, y'all. I think I want the bigger white, though. We are doing um, a diet thing where we do some shakes every day. So that's what he wanted. He wanted his shake. <laughs> He's already had his shake. Do not feel sorry for him. He has had a shake today. He can have a bar. He'll be fine. The blender is very loud. And I don't know why, but this man, when he runs the blender, runs it for like five full minutes. And it takes literally like 20 seconds to blend your drink up. That is all it takes. It does not take five minutes. But he just lets it run. And I'm like, good Lord. It's like pulverized by the time he gets done. <laughs> The tape makes it so much faster. Now I have a fly buzzing around here. They have let a fly in. Do y'all hear that? It's very loud. It must be a horse fly. It's very loud. Um, sticking to your shakes. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, uh, you like the shakes better, Jenny, than than bars. I prefer the bars, but not these bars. I'm not going to go into the brand because I'm not going to, you know, endorse or, or badmouth the particular brand that it is, but I'm not a fan of the bars. Um, I would prefer a an Atkins bar or a pure protein bar any day over these bars. They upset my stomach. I don't like them. I don't like what they do to my stomach. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. We're going to do, um, we can probably put that together here in a minute. All right, let's just start painting these and then we'll start putting that together. So we got to do our little pockets. Now I am going to do, shoot, I should have done it before I put it together. See, that's what happens when I get distracted too. Um, I meant to do a little distressing on these. So let me show you, let me show you what I'm going to do so that they're distressed. I don't know if it's distressed is the word, but rustic is the word that I use. So we are going to take my crazy fan brush here. Somebody said yesterday it's a fan brush, which is probably correct. There goes the fly. It's huge. It's a huge fly, y'all, on our video. Terrible. All right, so I've already glued my sunflower on. Ideally, I would not have glued it on before I did this. But hold on, I'm making sure I got enough white paint off of here. But I just really want to do like a very light. Distressing sort of thingy technique with a very dry brush with most of the white paint wiped off to make it look a little bit more like denim. So there we go. I think that's cute. I think that looks kind of like denim, don't y'all? And then the truck, we don't need to do the truck. You can distress the truck if you want to. I'm not going to distress it, but the pocket, you got to distress the pocket, I think, because then it looks more like jeans, right? Um, ba -ba -ba, let me think. I'm going to do the pockets first. I'm kind of worried about doing these sunflowers because not sunflowers, daisies, because these do not have the outline there. This is the banner and it is obviously just one piece because we have had enough of taking little tiny pieces apart. Have we not? Um, we don't need to do that for every piece on the banner. Plus then I wouldn't have been able to make it a, um, one sheet wonder 
I wouldn't able, I would not have been able to fit it all on one sheet of wood if I'd had to do like multiple layers. I'm trying to paint this without getting the paint down in the um in the little what do I call those? Tick marks, the little tick marks. I'm actually thinking I like this look of just it being kind of not completely painted where I just take a little bit, like make my brush a little drier and just kind of go and leave some areas that the paint didn't totally saturate. I think that looks kind of good for jeans. We're going to go with that. And then I'm going to do the white um, fan brush on top of that. we go cute 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 and then I probably shouldn't have stuck this back in water honestly I should have just left it out my dry my brush with a little bit of white paint most of which is wiped off. And I'm just making those look like little denim. Stone washed. They're stone washed, y'all. This makes my 80s heart happy that I've made stone washed jeans. <laughs> okay, who had a pair of stone washed jeans? Or five or six pairs of stone washed jeans? Who still has stone washed jeans? They're back in style. Did you know? Go to Target. You will see them. They are there. <laughs> all right let me get rid of this because I'm putting my hand on it already and it has white paint because I keep looking at it thinking that it's just a wet like a damp towel that I can wipe my hands on but but no mm -mm, no <sighs> so I can't wait for y'all to see I have something cute that I'm going to do to the apple tiered tray set next Tuesday something super cute, a little technique that I just thought would make it extra, extra, extra. I got to get this paint off my hands. It's getting on my nerves. Okay. Now we're going to, I'm, I'm practicing avoidance here. I'm avoiding, I am avoiding these because I really don't know how I'm going to paint them. I have no idea how I'm going to make them. We're going to put our chalkboard sign together first so we can procrastinate on painting our flowers on our banner. Sound good? Okay. Do y'all do that? Do y'all leave the last piece that you don't want to paint because you can't decide? Do y'all leave it for last? I do. I get all nervous and you know about it. All right, hey, sunshine. This has got like a little. Well, I don't want to come off of there. Little piece of wood sticking out. That's cute. That is some sticky painter's tape, y'all. need this closer to me so I can get it on here straight. I 
Okay, and it's gonna be, what I like about this Radun font, it's not the Radun font, I'm calling it the Radun font, it's the skinny font. But to me, it looks like Radun. If you're a Radun collector and you love to peruse TJ's and Marshall's for your Radun mugs and such, you know what I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? Love some Ray Dunn. But the skinny font looks like Ray Dunn. And I love it. I need a Marshall's fix. I haven't been to Marshall's in a while. The problem is that, and y'all tell me if you are, I'm not going to say how old I am, but you can probably guess around how old I am. I've probably said how old I was before. I don't know. Um, that when I was younger, I needed more things for my house. And now I don't need as many things for my house. I don't need all these decorations and all these things but I still like to shop but I just it's too much it's too much clutter I need to be more of a minimalist like my sister my sister is more of a minimalist and I think I would probably call myself a maximalist because <laughs> I like to shop y'all but I don't have room for all this crap I need to get rid of stuff I guess I don't know but I love to shop My daughter asked me at the end of our shopping trips, is it put back time? I'm like, yes, it is, it is put back time. That's when we put the things back that we knew from the get-go that we did not need. But we put our in our cart anyway because they were cute. So then it becomes put back time. <laughs> um, Stonewash jeans it is, yes, definitely. Do you, Pamela says, do you mask when cutting? Um, I only mask if I'm using my Glowforge typically because you have to pretty much mask with a Glowforge or else you get a lot of the, um, yellowing. But with my Thunder, I don't mask. I made some ornaments. I don't always mask. I've, I rarely mask, I should say. Before I got my Glowforge, I made some ornaments last Christmas and I masked them because I was doing some engraving on them. So I did mask them. But generally speaking, no, not for tear tray sets, certainly not. Okay, so there's my little Hey Sunshine piece. Let me put that, you can't see that because of the logo up there. All right, and then we've got part of our banner here. So now, now for the flowers. What are we gonna do with the flowers, y'all? What are we going to do? Do not know. Let me get a drink. Not a drink drink, just a drink. Y'all are probably like, is she gonna get a drink drink? Mm -mm. No, it is only 2.15. I'm not gonna have a drink drink yet. Okay. Y'all, sometimes I just go, I get a little crazy on videos and then I don't see a lot of people commenting and I'm like, do they, do they think I'm weird? Did I offend someone? Did I say something I shouldn't have said? I don't know, I'm sorry if I did, I'm sorry if I, I don't do a lot of drink drinking. I just, you know, I like my wine at night sometimes. Um, but yes, but then I don't see a lot of comments and I worry what, what happened. But I know y'all are watching me on mute because a lot of y'all are at work and I get it. Okay. All right. No, no. All right. We're going to do... We're gonna paint them white first, the whole thing. We're gonna paint them white. That is what we are gonna do. Get a fresh paper towel. The glue, Pamela, is stick fast. Jenny, you're so sweet, Jenny, thank you. And then I'm like, did they think I'm terrible because I kicked my husband out of the kitchen? No, he is fine. He can, he has plenty of food. Do not worry about him. 
All right, we're gonna paint these white. Trust me, you did not need to hear that blender running for five full minutes, I assure you. And what else he would have done is he would have been in there run ice maker. All right, I'm gonna paint on the sides of this. I should have used paint pen. This is why I do it, y'all. This is why I do paint pens. Um, our ice maker does not want to work correctly on our refrigerator. So he is the one who fixes the ice maker. He has the magic touch. He can get the ice maker working again. And it started acting up again last night. And he goes in there and I don't know what he does, but he gets it working right. But it requires a whole lot of like jiggling the ice around and banging and there's, there's banging y'all. There's banging and there's cussing. No, there's not cussing. I mean, there might be a little cussing, but there, there's banging around and jiggling of the ice and it's loud. So he would be in there doing that. I thought this brush would be like the perfect brush. Now I'm not so sure. I don't know. But I'm tired of the ice maker not working on a fridge that is not that old. And then the fan wants to run really loud. And everybody knows, y'all all know that that I'm getting, I got paint all over my brush. I violated rule number one of paint brushes, which is do not get paint past the metal part. The main rule of a paintbrush. Um, yeah, the fridge is not that old. So then you have to have the door open for a little while while the banging and the and the jiggling and the cussing are going on. <laughs> and then the fan starts running because the door has been open for what the fridge thinks is an ungodly length of time. So then we have to listen to the fan running. These are first world problems though. They truly, truly are. I'm just babbling because I don't know what else to talk about. So if y'all are thinking that I'm crazy, I'm just, you know, I'm just babbling. The longer I stay on here because I'm painting something, the more like crazy I start talking. You watch while you do the dishes and clean so you don't comment because of wet hands. <laughs> I understand. That's awesome. At least you're getting your stuff done. Kay, I miss you. Where have you been? I'm so glad you're watching. Y'all, I met Kay um, a few years ago at Tamara's event, Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornments Decor. And I met Kay at her event and, um, I just love Kay dearly. Tamara's event was so much fun. She is so sweet and we had such a good time and I met so many wonderful people there. And I hope that I can go again if now that all the craziness is over that maybe she'll do it again next year because I would love to go back. That was really fun. It is a huge undertaking to host an event like that. And I admire her for taking that on because I'm sure it was a lot of work. I don't know why I'm, I'm dabbing the back of that to get the paint off, but then I'm getting more paint on the back. I don't know what I'm doing. Do not attempt this at home. I am not a professional painter. This is a reenactment. <laughs> okay. So we have what I'm going to call again, a rustic coat of paint on our flowers. Okay, so that means that we have paint slopped everywhere and it doesn't look perfect, but that's the look I'm going for. Who, who did not tell me that this happened and how did it happen? <sighs> Do y'all see this? Do y'all see that I now have white paint on the hay? Where did that come from? <sighs> this is very disheartening. Okay. All right, baby wipe to the rescue. What the heck? I mean, I knew I was slopping paint, but I didn't think I was slopping paint like that. 
luckily I can just take a black Posca marker and get in there and fix that. But I don't know how that happened. I would have to do, I would have to watch my video back and be like, yep, that's where it happened right there. All right, we're going to do a little repair work here on this bad boy. Get in there. Do y'all talk to your markers? All right, now I gotta fix the yellow. Thank you, Kay. Kimberly says she's listening while we and watching while you pack orders. That is a good thing to do. I hate packing orders. Packing is the worst part. All right, that is just making a big old mess is what that's doing. I think maybe it just needs to dry a little bit more, but now I've got black paint on my yellow. I had black paint on my white. Now I have it on my yellow. There we go. That's a little, wow. Well. All right, we're going to go back in a minute. We're going we're gonna to touch that up because that's getting on my nerves. Get the black off my yellow. All right, so now we're going to, I think the best luck that I'm going to have is with black on these and not gray. You know what would be cute? Oh my gosh, y'all. I just thought of something that would be so stinking cute on these. Those half wood balls. Do you know what I'm talking about? The half wood balls. I'm going to show you in a minute. Although I'm pretty sure mine are not the right size. I think I need bigger ones for this. Okay, so yellow and where are my half wood balls? Where would they be? Here they are. Here they are. Yes, they're not big enough. Okay, if you have big enough of these, okay, these are like those wooden balls that I talked about that you string up for your tags, but see how they're cut in half? They come like that, okay? So these are from Amazon. They sell all different sizes, but I don't have any ones bigger than this, I don't think. I think that they all, yeah, they all came the same size. So if I had them a little bit bigger, how cute would it be to make your center of your flower raised on there? That would be so stinking cute, right? All right, so I might even have to hop on Amazon and order some. Um, these, let's see. I'd have to look back at my orders on Amazon to see, but these look to be three quarter inches. So I don't know if you need one inch. Is one inch too big? One inch would be too big. It's almost like you need, okay, let me think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. It's like you need seventh, seven eighths. Am I saying that right? Seven eighths. Yeah, seven eighths inch half wood balls would fit on the center of your flowers. Now, if you got the one inch, that you could probably make that work, but they would just go. They would go more to more outside of the center a little bit, but there's, there's room on there for it. So you could make one inch ones work if you wanted to, but I think that that would be super, super cute. All right. We're going to hop back over here for a minute and we're going to try to, yeah, that just needed to be a little drier. Yep. There we go. We fixed it. All right. That one's fixed. Um, you could leave these like this if you wanted to. You don't have to paint the edges of them. I'm going to try to paint the edges of one of them just to see if I, <clears throat> if it looks good or if it just ends up being a hot mess. I don't know. We're going to see. But they honestly, they look good like that. So I don't know. I kind of don't want to do it. Maybe gray. Maybe I should do gray. But I don't have a, a 
I don't have a fine tip gray Posca. I only have a medium, I think. Yeah, I only have a medium tip gray. So I don't know. This wood, y'all. I probably needed to sand it. I might be totally messing this up. We'll see. I've got to hold my glasses at just the right angle that I can see what I am doing with these progressive glasses. Okay, I'm liking it. I'm okay with it. I think either way, you are good. But I would say that you are going to need a paint pen because I can imagine doing that the brush. You'd have to be really good. You have to be a really good painter with a real steady hand. And I don't have a steady hand. My hands don't shake normally until I try to go do artwork. And then I don't know what happens. My hands start shaking. Okay, so yeah, that I think that's cute like that. So you could do the gray outline of it. And I think once you have it... Um, up against your tray it's probably gonna pop a little more if you have an outline of it um try Karen what are trifocals I've never heard of trifocals let me know what those are I just got these a few months ago and I was not a fan at first and they're not, ex I mean, they're not, they are expensive. They are expensive. They're not cheap is what I was going to say. I did get them at Costco. I'm going to tell y'all, if you need progressive glasses, go to Costco. Or any glasses, really go to Costco. Because I spent $400 on progressives from Warby Parker. And when they came, I don't know what the deal is because people love Warby Parker. But I'm going to tell you, my glasses were such poor quality they had no bend to them. See how there's a curve? Like, let me hold it against so you can see it against the wall. See, this this curves, okay? So these were stick straight, and that's just not the way your head's shaped. I mean, you need curve to glasses. I don't know if all their glasses are like that. Yes, I know I could have done a try-on. I just, I think all their glasses are like that, though. I don't know. So they took them back. I was like, these are uncomfortable. They, I swear they sent me kids' glasses. I swear they did because they were so small. And I have a small, like, narrow, I guess, not a narrow head, but, like, when I wear glasses, I generally have to get smaller glasses. But I swear these were, like, children's glasses. So I went to Costco, and they hooked me up. Costco... I don't even think they were $200 for progressives. Way cheaper. And they're super comfortable. They didn't have as much to choose from, but I found some that I made them, I made them work. They're fine. Okay. So there's our banner. I'll have to put this on a background that doesn't have paint all over it so that and take a picture of it so that y'all can see how cute it is because there's paint all over the place where they are right now but this is what we have here our little tiered tray set isn't that cute I'm super excited about it I cannot wait to get this one sitting on I have a little kitchen shelf it's not a tiered tray it's a little kitchen shelf but I think these are going to be so cute on it for summer and then I might throw in like some lemon decor because of the yellow I think the lemon decor would be really cute like maybe I have some um sprigs that have like lemons and the leaves from lemons um 
and I'm going to put those in a white picture, set them on there, and I think it'll be really cute. You have trifocals too, but they have lines. Oh, okay. Progressives give you a migraine. They do give me a headache if I have them on for too long. I don't have them on all day long. I see what you're, I know what you're talking about though. Okay, let me get my top back on my stick fast thick. All right, so y'all, if you, uh, oh, goodness, if you're not in the club, hop over and get on the waiting list to get in the club when it opens next Tuesday. And then you can get all our fun sunshine projects that we're doing, all of these fun things, okay? And you get the bonus projects if you join on the first day, you get them all. So join the first day so that you can get all of the fun projects. These are all the, the cute Hey Sunshine um, door hanger. And then tomorrow, I'll be making the shaker. So tune in tomorrow um, to see the shaker set made. And um, if you don't know what a shaker set is, then you can see that. That would be super fun. So thank you so much. Thanks, Kay, um, for joining me. Uh, the link to get on the waiting list is in the video description. And I will see y'all tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Thank you. Bye.